Russet from FIG, welcome into the program. You know, that is the thing, uh, trying to not uh, overplay the situation, but uh, acknowledging that the air has been thick with Fed speak since they last met. Anything to sway the reserve and believe that uh, really it, it needed to do something rather than nothing in this environment? Or are they just m mindful of the macro risks and, and prepared just to sit it out? Uh, hi Carson, thanks for having me. So today is actually quite a heavy uh, data release day today. We've had the retail sales this morning uh, and that came in weaker than expected. We also had building approvals as well, which was mixed. And this is just prior to the, the RBA meeting tomorrow, as you mentioned. And so neither of those prints are really big enough to sway, uh, I think, the decision of the RBA tomorrow. We are expecting it to be unchanged. Mm -hmm. I think at the Bloomberg has a 0.5% chance of a cut and zero chance of a rate hike at the moment. So, you know, it, it will be a matter of just waiting and seeing, but no real change. And adding to this as well is the new um, macro prudential measures being introduced by APRA. And this is going to cool the, the housing market in both Sydney and Melbourne and take the pressure off the RBA as well to do anything because these uh, stricter lending uh, regulations are, are going to come into play there. Are you surprised just on that measure that the focus is switched to the interest only part of the market and that investors proper have been sort of the heat's come out of that uh, onward pressure that there could have been a lowering of thresholds that hasn't been adopted instead we're we're looking at a, a section of the market that arguably an interest only impost is not as uh, seriously felt as a line on the sand on investments in the round I think the, the main thing to come out of here, though, with those interest-only loans is that at the moment there's only over 40% of loans out there that are interest-only. So they're going to change that and, and cap it at 30%. So that does go to, to show how many interest-only loans are there and, and how that is also fueling the market at the moment. It is very much in the investors' you know, borrowing power that they are able to get their hands on the, the, this funding. So in capping that there, I do think it, it has been a, a switch uh, and not as was expected, but I, I definitely do think it will be efficient in, in cooling the market there. Mm. Let's go over to the US where the lack of any urgency by Fed officials and principally the, the chief herself to follow up the March hike with anything in June has taken the wind out of the sails of the greenback, about a 5% slide since that March tightening. Now, to that extent, uh, do you think the Fed's comfortable in that? universe or it uh, believes it may need to start a little bit of uh, strategic jawboning of, of the greenback? No, I actually do think they're, they're comfortable with it at the moment. I mean, that has moved, you know, Quite, it moves around quite quite a bit with you know whoever is out speaking um, mm -hmm. from the US and we had uh, just recently William Dudley and James Bullard actually saying that the there is a possibility that the rate hikes will be enacted slower than what the market actually anticipates mm -hmm. and then we've seen a reaction you know with the US dollar to that as well so I think mm -hmm. they'll very much will wait and see but I do think that they're quite comfortable with where it is at the moment the idea though that personal income and spending in February, uh, the core PCE as of last week showing a slowdown, is that looking as if it could become entrenched? And if it were to do so, uh, you know, never mind a slowdown, what about an actual freeze? Yeah. On, uh, on those moves? Yeah, it is, to Carson, it's a really good question and it's a good point there. I, I don't so much just think it will be a freeze. I do think it will just be a slowdown. We'll watch how that all does play out. But, yeah, mm -hmm. at this stage, th there's nothing really too alarming there. Mm -hmm. Demand for investment-grade bonds in this environment, as you do, though, get, you do see a wall of money going back at the same time competing for interest into EM. So you look at EM currencies, look at EM markets uh, that were fearing... Uh, capital outflows, they look as if they're looking like safe harbours for a longer period, to your point before, about a slower path of US rate rises. Yeah, that's right. I mean, this theme of cautiousness we're seeing in the market is mm. flowing through to demand that clients, you know, what they are investing in and what they want to put in their portfolios. And there definitely is more towards investment grade and also higher rated bonds as well. And so we have seen demand for the tier two investment grade floating rate note bonds and mm. also senior debt as well, which sits higher in the capital structure as well. So it is very much a safe haven play. And that seems to be where the the market is going at the moment. 
Sovereign bond issues by emerging markets hitting their all-time quarterly record in Q1. So speak to that. How does that fit the the broader thesis. Yeah, we actually have, and, and this week uh, itself, it's kicked off with quite a bit of issuance. Mm. And we have, in the last couple of weeks or so, seen a bit of issuance coming through. Mm. So there is very much demand at the moment. It's it's partly a chase for yield mm. and also this demand for investment grade as well. So it's quite a mixture across all of this new issuance between investment grade mm. and high, high rated paper as well. And so there has been quite a, a demand for it. And we're seeing more and more uh, companies corporates uh, come to market with it. And sector-wise, where would you say the, the key focus remains now? Is, it, is there an even spread throughout industrial into uh, through banks? I mean, we've seen the Suncorp, the hybrids uh, for their tier one uh, capital. But beyond that, what's been the, where's the real battle for hearts and minds? Yeah, I do think there is continued demand in, in banks and financials, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's also a bit of a safe haven play as well in that. Uh, we had uh, Heartland Bank and New Zealand Bank on Friday come to market as well uh, and, and launch a, a new bond, a new issuance there as well. So it is quite a, a mixture of, of issuance, but I, I still do think that it, it seems to be more in the financials at the moment. OK, well, let's just hope for a bit more of a diversification. Yes. through the next uh, six months inevitably. Jessica, thank you for now. Thanks, Carson. Jessica Russell there from FIG. Let's move on.